the most minute details can really be the most important. Jefferson fashion design was where I wanted to be. Fashion is more than just clothes. It's colors, patterns, silhouettes, fabric, dress, sneakers, skirt, huge puffy sleeves, jacket, streetwear, women's wear, men's clothes, hand weaving, hand quilting, embroidery, applique, patchwork, jacquard, sewing, climate change, unisex, representation, Coco Chanel, Alessandra McQueen, Beyonce, Justin Bieber, Harry Potter. I'm a Gryffindor, of course I'm proud. Philadelphia, Tokyo, Paris, Venice, New York, London, Vintage, modern, feminine, masculine, non-binary, sporty, sophisticated, concrete, soft, elegant, unconventional. Fashion is so diverse. It's a representation of who you are. You can see my personality in my work. My mom taught me hand sewing. I've always done it. Since I was super young, there's a way to create functional and purposeful, even soulful things that have a story to tell. Fashion design is a very, very big business. It turns an awful lot of the world's economy. Fashion designers see the world differently from other designers because we're problem solvers of the human form. The world of fashion needs to sit up and take notice of Jefferson fashion design students because these students are game changers. They think big and they really want to make a difference. The world is constantly changing and we know how to reflect that in the clothes that we make. Fashion designers have so much power to push social issues. How can we make this better? How can we be more innovative? How can we include more people? I am the first one ever at Jefferson to do an adaptive wear collection. I'm working on plus size forms and getting plus size people seen and like the representation they deserve. There are other young, black, talented people making things and they should be supported. I am unique and I am powerful. I want to create work that makes women of color feel empowered and strong. Being able to say like, you know, I used all my fabric, I didn't waste anything, nothing is going to the trash is just as important as what it looks like. We all have different aesthetics and just seeing everybody's different projects is so incredible. You go from seeing my stuff, which is evening wear, and I have another friend who's doing evening wear and her stuff is completely different. You could definitely tell like whose collection is whose. A lot of their collections really just impress them. Like there's some stuff where I'm like, how did they do that? If I was talking to like incoming freshmen, I'd be like, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. But just remember that the work that you put into it is what you're also gonna get out. Between sticking your fingers with pins, sweating in the studio, and tears, so many tears. So between the blood, sweat, and tears, you can really see their hearts and like how much they've poured into it for projects. After all of the long nights and hard work, I didn't know it was gonna be so satisfying. Before we would have done, you know, your typical runway show where you have guests come in, sitting on both sides, watching the models go down the runway. But even when you're looking at the industry, that's not happening anymore. Now it's all about storytelling. And we wanted our students to tell us their narrative. What inspired you? Why did you pick that fabric? Why did you sew those seams together? Who in your life inspired you to do this? We want to talk about that. We're showcasing our students' work not so focused on the end result, but focusing on the process. So what we're doing here is going to be a precedent for what a lot of other universities are going to be doing going into the future. I'm gonna change the world by being my full and complete authentic self and holding the people around me accountable to do the same. My name's Lucas Cercello, and I'm a fashion designer. It was kind of this almost like identity crisis in a sense of like, well, where do I fit? Being a homosexual, femme presenting, non-binary, I don't see myself represented in the market. And then it slowly kind of evolved from there into this sociological study of queer youth in the 80s. 
The way that I looked at this collection was this community that I'm a part of, what's that history and how am I building on that history? And kind of looking at everyone that came together during that time, such an awful and hard time with the AIDS epidemic, youth being removed from their homes and having to seek safe haven. Queer youth would go and compete in these big balls in the underground of Harlem and they would compete in Vogue competitions and different runway categories. And it was just complete expressive freedom. It's important to go back and pay homage to all those people that paved the way before us. My collection is, first and foremost, camp. It's bold, it's graphic, it's appealing, it's appalling, it's, it's exciting, and it's just different. How far can I push this idea of tackiness before it's no longer sexy? And can I kind of bring in these ideas of like a little bit more sultry with something that is a little gaudy almost? And I think that really is the heart of what camp is. So each look kind of became one of my queer children of sorts. And I'm kind of this like house mother, delegating what everyone's gonna wear, what we're gonna look like. No matter your gender, sexual orientation, race, fashion is for everybody. It's all about what makes you feel good and what makes you want to step out of the house and present the best version of yourself. I've grown exponentially during my time here at Jefferson, not only in terms of my own identity and who I am at my core, but also in terms of my work ethic and my design capabilities. I think I've grown astronomically. The value of Jefferson at large is the community. We are set up with so many phenomenal faculty and peers. It's an environment where collaboration and close interpersonal connection is like really important. That not only sets us up during our time at Jefferson for a really successful education, but also after and post-graduation, I think it really is a network that's very close-knit. In the future, I would love to see House of Cercello come to life. I would love to see it on every boy, girl, and non-binary. I would love to see it out in the world. And I'm a driver. I'm going to drive it. I can make that dream possible. I think fashion is more than just clothes, that it has to connect to everything. By using fashion, we can tell a story. We can help reflect how people think and how people act in the clothes that we design. I'm Sam Miller, and I am a fashion designer. Good morning, and welcome to Tea Time with Sam. Today we're drinking pomegranate tea. I just really like to drink tea, and I looked into the history of it, I looked into the origins of it, the stories, and I loved it. I think I wanted to connect that tea started out as something that was so serene and people drank it to help their bodies, but then because everybody wanted it so much, it became this commodity that people needed, that people died for, that people created war over. And it just shows that something so simple can make such an incredible impact. And I think fashion does that too without us realizing it. My collection is modern and chic. I wanted someone to put on my collection and to feel like themselves and to feel like they were going to a beautiful tea party. <laughs> the shirt is made out of my collaboration fabric. I did it with Julia Foster. It's a jacquard. So she helped me create this beautiful jacquard that is so special because it's just ours. No one else in the world has it and I'm so excited to use it and to show it off. We have such an incredible textiles major here. I'm friends with people who are fashion majors at other schools and none of them get to have their own fabric that is made right here, like where they're learning. I think it's so much more special that this fabric was made here, was thought up here, and is now being presented here at this school. I'm proud of the fact that I did do so much research and that when people ask about my collection, I have all of this background information that I can share and that I can say help influence me. Young fashion designers know how to really look around the world with a different set of eyes and to see that the world is constantly changing and we know how to reflect that in the clothes that we make. The first design professors I had here were so welcoming and were so um, open about how everybody, even if you are on different levels, that everybody starts the same and we all grow together. I've made some really good friends here. We all know that we're working so hard to get a job and to succeed and to graduate. 
has helped me try harder and do better as a designer and as a student. Fashion has power. In a way, it kind of brings people together because people are connecting each other by the things that they wear. I feel like if I can make somebody just like feel comfortable and confident to go about their day and be like, I look good today, then I did a good job. My name's Taylor and I'm a fashion designer. Kind of quirky, nerdy. It's just like everyone knows that that's just kind of my, uh, I, I enjoy it. Hydrate or dietary, am I right? When I was growing up, my aunt actually taught me how to sew. And then I met a friend who got me into like the nerd stuff. And then um, I started making costumes and cosplays. And I found a lot of enjoyment in that. And I really enjoyed taking like uh, character and costume designs and making them into more streetwear fashion. I really just love to create, find new types of textures and colors and new things and just putting things together and seeing what happens. My collection is bright, voluminous. <laughs> um, oh my God, I'm not, this is why I'm not an English major. I'm telling you. I got my inspiration from the four elements, earth, water, fire, air. I was kind of looking at how they interact with each other. So not only did I want to try to apply the four elements into like the design process and techniques that I was using, but I also really wanted to work with silhouettes and fabrics that I had never worked with before. Things like working with like a lot of mesh, vinyl. I used a heat gun to melt vinyl together to create like a glass effect. I'm going ham, trying to learn how to do all these techniques. I mean, I think it's always important to keep experimenting, you know? If you don't learn how to do new things, you might get stuck and then not know the possibilities of learning how to do other things or, you know what I mean? I think I've come such a long way and everything I can make now is so much more elevated. I'm putting a lot of work into it and I think the work shows, so I'm, I'm proud of what I'm coming up with so far. I want to keep going further. I'll still continue to keep learning. There's still a lot of things I've never done yet. So I'm just gonna keep going. Nerds can save the world. Absolutely. There's more and more nerds every day. I always envision a young modern woman who is just not afraid of being unconventional. I would want them to feel confident secure, fearless, feel comfortable in who they are, to feel better about themselves. I'm Tamaya Alexander, and I am a fashion designer. Arte Povera is a 1960s contemporary art movement where our Italian artists were going to low-income neighborhoods and finding sources of inspiration, creating unconventional artwork, challenging traditional conventions, I am proud to be from North Philadelphia. My family, my grandparents, my closest cousins, we all live in Philadelphia. Jefferson teaches us to sort of look into ourselves and to learn about who we are first, what we like specifically, and how to just apply that to what we do. My collection is uniquely crafted, audacious, structural, unconventional, but modern. I find myself quite often inspired by architecture. I found beauty in the, the textures, the shapes, and the, the colorations of the, the brick prints, or even just the rusting of a bridge. And that's what I found beautiful. I believe that designers have a, a power to give a message, to change the way people view different things, and to just represent people who feel like they may not be represented.
The power of Q is the power of adorable femininity. It's being feminine and confident, but also a little bit more magical. I think it's a little bit more magical than just being feminine. My name is Tiani Brianna Brito, and I'm a fashion designer. I used to have this idea of what fashion design was, um, and I didn't realize that it took a lot of really being deep and thinking about what values do I have and what makes me happy or what makes me sad or what can I improve? And those are the things that create such wonderful concepts in design is when you actually take the time to step back and think, what do I want to do to help the world? And then how can I do that through my design? Education has been so important to me. And it's, I think, one of the most important things that my parents have ever given me besides like love and food and stuff. I really appreciate the confidence that is instilled in every student. I feel so respected and I feel so much respect for the people around me here. I think that's one of the most important things that I learned at Jefferson. I want girls to identify with my clothes for how pretty it is, but not just because of that. I, I want girls to feel confident in what they wear, to be different and be okay with being different. My collection is the Tiani Brito aesthetic. It's a little bit of a mathematical equation between you add some ruffles plus some type of interesting fabric, usually everything in a pastel pink, and then add a little sparkle. Metamorphosis is not just the life cycle of something. I think metamorphosis to me is the evolution of something. Then going from early stages into having a beautiful life and then eventually is remembered in, in this type of beautiful way. It's the metamorphosis of me as a designer. Jefferson has taught me everything from putting a thread on a bobbin to, well, I didn't know how to do that before, so maybe not that. But <laughs> Jefferson has taught me so much technical skill that I know is gonna be so important in industry. That feels good. When I'm designing, I'm thinking of not only myself, I'm thinking of all other women too. You can be whoever you want. It's just a matter of having a vision for it. If I make one person feel like they are a princess in what I've made, I've did it. It's just sparkle. Well, fashion to me is a voice. It's definitely about speaking. What you wear speaks about who you are without having to speak, which is really nice. To me, it's just showing people who you are. My name is Rebecca Kramer, and I'm a fashion designer. Things take time. It's always quality over quantity for me. I wanted to make this collection really like down to earth, homey, so I like connect to it a lot. And my grandparents, they've always been there. I mean, they still support me and always have like through everything that I've done. I wanted some way to give back to them and show them that I, I really love them. And, I notice it and it means a lot to me. <laughs> I just hope that they see all the little things that I put into my collection and very time consuming because they're definitely worth it. <laughs> I mean, even like the collection I feel like isn't enough, but words just can't speak enough how grateful I am to have them very much in my life. My collection is very down to earth, comfortable. To me, a feeling of home. Well, slow fashion to me is something that takes time to make, but it's definitely quality. So I taught myself how to crochet. I like crocheted a sweater. And from there, like crocheting took off. It comes easy to me, I guess. I like that you can crochet, knit, macrame out of anything. You can cut up fabric and use it. Plastic bags I've done before. You can do it out of anything you have. <laughs> Zero waste and sustainability are very important to me because it's my future with you know, climate change, uh, pollution, the fashion industry does play a big part because you see when you cut out fabric, like how much you end up wasting and throwing out. 
I think being able to say like, you know, I used all my fabric, I didn't waste anything, nothing's going to the trash is just as important as to how it looks in the end. I think the value of a Jefferson education is definitely working with very educated professors. They definitely know what they're doing here and they've helped a lot in my four years here. Helped me grow as a person, as a fashion designer. With a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world, sometimes people feel like, like I can't really do much or contribute and I feel like this is definitely a way that I can contribute. After college, I'm not completely sure what I want to do yet but I've definitely learned that I love fashion design <laughs> and that I want to continue with it. Everything can be inspiration for design. A story, your family, your life, anything. My name's Ichiro and I am a fashion designer. I'm in China, Guangzhou, China. It's located in the south of China. Guangzhou Tower is the highest in the country. I want to create my own design style. I want to let people know my point of view and my ideas. I come to Jefferson to learn the fashion design. In my first class, I feel curious and nervous because of the machine I saw in the studio. I didn't uh, use this before, so I started and after that I can finish the clothes independently. My looks are natural, abstract, texture, mysterious, and cold. My collection it's about accent. It's one of the places that I want to travel. My favorite piece of my collection is inspired by the famous Diamond Beach. The top is made of two different texture fabrics stitched together. The black fabric represents the black sand and the rocks on the beach. It's a good connection. And my collection makes me very proud. Whenever I finish a design, I feel the sense of accomplishment. I feel so happy. I want to keep challenging myself. Getting something on the body that can fit you and make you feel good, even if it doesn't look good to everybody else as long as you see yourself in it and you look good and you feel good. That's what I want people to feel and that's what I want everyone to feel. I'm Becca Meschler and I am a fashion designer. So when I was little, my grandparents got me a sage green Hello Kitty sewing machine. I still have it and use it occasionally. And then my parents signed me up for classes and that was that. I started making my own patterns for like different stuffed animals and then I just started saying, okay, well, I like this dress and I like that top. How can I put them together? It just kind of kept evolving from that and like mixing different patterns. From sophomore in high school, I knew I wanted to go here. I did the camps here. I fell in love with this school. That was that. I had said, that's all I want. That's the school I want to go to. I'm doing that. It's just creative. I get to show and do something that I love. My collection is light, fun, playful, whimsical, nostalgic. Being someone who struggled with how they looked and knowing so many others do, no matter if they're skinny or bigger, it's hard. As a plus size person myself, I've always struggled trying to fit in with my friends and like go shopping with them. I've always hated it but it was also kind of fun at the same time because I would pick them different outfits that I would want, but I couldn't go to the store and pick up in my size, and that always hurt. For me, my collection is me. It's part of who I am. It's something I love, and it's something that I want people to be able to wear and fall in love with themselves in. The real value of a Jefferson education is the connections that you make. 
I mean, the textile collaboration, that was such a fun experience. My amazing textile partner, Kristen Tynan, came up with a bunch of different samples and I fell in love with the fabric. Getting the experience and like working with someone else from a different like team, basically, that's a huge value, especially with how collaborative Jefferson can be. If I were to lose fashion, I would lose a huge chunk of who I am. It's been something I've loved since second grade. If I didn't have that, I don't know who I would be. I'm loud. I'm gonna make my voice heard. and You're gonna know my name at some point. Whether it be that I am a costume designer, I start my own brand, or I don't know what it is, but you're gonna know me. My voice matters because I want to be seen, I want to be heard, and I want people to feel where I come from. I am strong, I am unique, and I am powerful. My voice will change the world. My name is Camry Spivey, and I'm a fashion designer. Kintsugi is the Japanese art of mending broken pottery. When you look at Kintsugi, it's broken on the outside, but the way they mend it together, it makes it look really beautiful. I kind of related it back to my real life. The experiences I've been through shaped me into the woman I am today. The challenges I've been through in life, they've taught me to embrace myself and embrace who I am, to not hide who I am from others. Everything I create is 100% true to myself and my flaws or the things that I think are flaws really make me beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. My collection is colorful, feminine, picturesque, vivacious, concrete, and harmonious. I want women of color to feel very empowered when they wear my clothes. I do think that being an African-American female in the fashion major or even like just in the field, it's difficult sometimes because you constantly feel like you have to prove yourself to other people and you constantly like comparing yourself. But what I will say is not to fall into that mindset. It's important to be yourself, like literally be yourself. I'm more confident today and my ideas have grown a lot. A hundred percent, I'm proud of the work I do. Being from Philadelphia means putting your city on, learning to hustle, and giving back to your community. You should believe in me because I believe in myself. Absolutely, I'm gonna change the world. I will be an advocate for women of color in the fashion industry. There are no limits for Camry Spivey. There's an attitude that comes with wearing the right stuff. That's what I really like to do in my designs. I want to design for someone who is bold and kind of needs to wake up being like, I'm awesome. My name is Tara Pfeiffer, and I'm a fashion designer. I started studying abroad, and I went to Venice. It was so serene. Didn't know that we were going during carnival season. All of a sudden, people were just flooding the streets. There were tourists everywhere. There were also so many locals trying to like sell their costumes and sell their masks on the streets. As a fashion major, I was obviously really attracted to all of the detailing that was going into them. And so I really just took bits and pieces of that for my collection and try to modernize it. One of the things that this school does really well with our fashion program is they expose us to so many different parts of the industry. We do everything from collection development to final productions. Because we know how to do all of those things, we'll be able to collaborate better because we have had hands-on experience. My collection is a comparison between the Venice Carnival and its setting. So it juxtaposes the Gothic architecture that's found in Venice with this extravagant festival that takes place there. It's completely unapologetic, it's so bold, and it's really for this customer that wants to push the industry forward. I like to sit right in between avant-garde and ready-to-wear fashion. I wanna show people that I can take fashion somewhere that I want it to be, you know, transformative and I want it to continue transitioning. I definitely aim to 
inspire people to embrace the weird and find beauty in everything. I really appreciate how the wearer has to have this, I'm waking up and I feel great and I really want to like be fully myself today. So I want my clothes to be that for somebody. One of the things that I've gotten from this program is that confidence. We really learn a lot of soft skills here, how to problem solve, how to communicate, how to manage your time, all of those things that you need to be an employee in any field. I can't wait to see where I go from here. And I think having that hope for the future is something that I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't come here. I am a survivor. I was in an abusive relationship and it turned very bad very quickly and I couldn't get out. And when I did, it was probably one of the best feelings in the world. And I want to make it known to other women and other men as well who are in abusive relationships or have been sexually assaulted that they are survivors, that they are warriors, and this collection is dedicated to them. My name is Jessica Grace Ware, and I am a fashion designer. I wear clothes to feel confident, and it's a way to make yourself stand out, to be an individual. I think fashion really defines you, who you are as a person. As I'm completing this collection, I can just feel the wounds healing. I can just feel my mental space is getting a lot better, but just overall becoming me again. Fashion allows us to be who we are, who you truly are in your innermost self. My collection is definitely dramatic, adventurous, definitely feminine, definitely can see the feminism in this collection. Probably the biggest challenge was making sure the message was heard. It is so easy to take a message and it just completely go off course. I was really worried that I would start doing this and if I got too emotionally invested into it, it would turn more into a me collection than an entire survivor collection because it's not just my story. I didn't really see the armor as protecting you from the outside war. I saw it as a way for you to go to battle. Women these days, we are fighting so many forces misogyny, sexism, sexual harassment, and this is supposed to make sure she feels powerful enough to go into work and basically feel like a badass. This program has really helped me gain my confidence to come into Jefferson and getting to express myself so creatively to push all my emotions out. It really helped show how powerful I was, how creative I was, and how independent I am. I'm not afraid to push heavy, controversial topics. I'm happy to be that one voice that stands out. I've always loved being creative and expressing myself through clothing, and I think it's cool when you can add your own touch to the styles. Hi, I'm Elena Seed, and I'm a fashion designer. Usually when you think of Tokyo, you think of a traditional Tokyo with Japanese architecture, but a cyberpunk version of Tokyo is more grunge and more high tech and futuristic. The colors of the city are all very bright and vivid. It is a lot of dark backgrounds with all these bright pops of colors. Blues, orange, yellow. Colors you would see like on the streets of any city, um, just 10 times brighter. Fashion has really brought me confidence. That extra personality the clothing brings really helps me to express who I am. My collection is unisex, futuristic, genderless, oversized, and modern. It's somewhat different from what I usually do. I kind of push the lines with this one. It does resemble my aesthetic and stuff and what I like. I just kind of went further than I usually do and tried some new things that I haven't done before. Creating my own graphics and doing hand painting. These clothes are kind of um, experimental, so they're still very wearable, but they just have a little twist to them. 
I'm always wanting to try new things. I'm always looking to creatively push the boundaries and stuff. With every new collection, I'm really trying to think of different ways that I can bring something new. It's close to your vision come to life, and I think it's really resembling what I had in mind. My biggest takeaway from my four years at Jefferson would definitely have to be the friendships I've made. It's really cool when you're at a design school to be around so many other creative minds and getting to see other people's work and bouncing ideas back and forth. All the professors here are great and they really take the time to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. And I think that's really special to have someone who's had so many years in the industry be able to give you some of the knowledge they've acquired. Nowadays, it's a very prominent thing to use fashion for social change. There'll be a lot of designers, myself included, who can bring a lot of hard conversations to the topic in a fun way through fashion. Not exactly sure what the future holds, but I think it's important to hear from young designers because we are the next generation and we have a lot of ideas for the world of tomorrow. One thing about studying abroad, you can't imagine how tough you are. <laughs> like, before I come to the US, I don't know how to cook, but here, how can I say? I cook great food for now. <laughs> I'm Jingwen Wu, I'm a fashion designer. Uh, I'm from Suzhou, which is near Shanghai in China, and it's a nice place. I usually go home once a year because COVID, the airplane ticket, like, you, can, you just can't get it. And you know, when people, they have a work, it's fine because you have work in your mind. You think you're fine. But when you have a vacation and it's COVID and you can't go outside, that's awful. And at that time, I'm thinking about What's the meaning of the life? I'm thinking about my parents. I'm thinking about my hometown. I must find something to like support me to through this time. I want to turn my emotion into a collection. I want to turn how I how I feel sad and how I find something that's make me feel happiness. My work is romantic, it's classic, it's about hope, it's about childhood memories. My collection is classic, romantic, and it's hope, it's about childhood. The fabric is not hard fabric, it's not heavyweight fabric. I choose a lot of sheer fabric, lots of lightweight fabric. I think it's the softest part in my heart. I think fashion is something it's related to people's daily life, and you can see a designer in their collection. Like, you can see how they're choosing fabric, all the design, all the detail, all the emotion, like all the hard work. I think that's, that's a great thing, that's a piece of art. Fashion design is kind of a way you bring beauty to the world, and every, everyone can enjoy that. When you're far away from home, you really miss that. Like, you miss everything. I will not say like fashion saved me. I will say like fashion let me find a way to like show my story. Experimenting in designs is always going to be there. Things can be looked at in a different way. You can take things that you have and repurpose it. I want to have my own brand and I want to have it inclusive, sustainable, and I want to have pieces that are meaningful and they connect with the customer on a deep personal level. Hi, I'm Morgan Fitzpatrick and I'm a fashion designer. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Everything I have in my collection is sustainable. It's about climate change and the impacts that are going to take place if we don't do anything soon. And it's focusing on the rise of different ways that we're going to have to adapt to our environment. Fashion designers have a huge responsibility. It's really important just to make sure that we're doing our part to just be aware and knowledgeable on the textiles that we use. How can we use that knowledge and just create like meaningful, necessary pieces for the customer? My collection is adaptable, essential, 
layered, protective, and multifunctional. There are so many ways you can customize textiles just from dyeing with different types of food in your house, things that you would never think of. Black beans, mint, grass, pine cones. An avocado pit is a brown pit, but it comes off with this really nice light pink color. Turmeric will give you this really bright, bold yellow. There's different techniques for textile printing. You can use anything with a cool texture for a stamp. I used a sponge, I used a rope. So I really just made my techniques work for me, cutting different fabrics and patchworking them together. At Jefferson, I really found this idea of what I wanted to do with my life. And I just found my voice and what legacy I wanted to leave. As a designer, I just knew that I needed to create something that was going to make an impact for the environment because your work is a reflection on yourself. I always wanted to make a dress that looked like a fairy would wear it. I thought magic was real, like every kid did. That's something that I've just carried with me inside me, like this little small girl is like holding onto this thing that she loves so dearly. Hi, I'm Hope Worth, and I am a fashion designer. My collection is about my childhood, especially focusing on elements of nature. Childhood is like the last time that you're just so innocently unaware of like everything in the world, and I think it's beautiful. The big sugar maple tree in my backyard of my childhood home is ginormous. And I always like to look up at it and see the leaves and like the different like variations and light patterns they would form. During the fall, it would be that bright yellow color. It would just be a whole sea of yellow. I really want it to be full circle, show my childhood dreams and like, wow, I just, I finally got to see it to fruition. My collection is whimsical, elegant, magical, nature-inspired. I think the best value from going to school here was a sense of community I felt, especially within my major. There wasn't a competitive drive there in the way that's like mean-spirited. It was more of a competitive drive in, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I want to do better now too. It makes me happy looking at my friends and thinking, I'm so proud of you. You've come so far. And I just, that's like my happiest part of like going to Jefferson. I'm proud of my work in this collection. <laughs> it's like, I'm really happy with the, the looks I've created, the things I designed. I'm excited to show my friends. Now I'm like, hey, can you guys please look at my dress? Isn't it beautiful? And I just waltzing around the studio in my dresses and things. <laughs> Fashion design is something that's kind of grown with me ever since I was little. I think it's the most genuine thing about me is having that creative drive to be in fashion. Fashion is so diverse and intricate and it alters the way we all live like exponentially. We decide what trends people are gonna wear, what types of clothing people are gonna wear, and then that alters what activities people have. It's almost like we're predicting the future for how people are gonna live. I think fashion design can change the world. Fashion is really close to my heart. I've never wanted to do anything else. I was dead set on fashion. My name is Kashana Brooks and I'm a fashion designer. If you do something that you love, it'll always be rewarding. My grandfather, my dad's father is a tailor. So um, in the 90s, my uncle had a brand called Rough by Wentworth. He was the designer. He picked out the materials, the fabrics, the brand was him. He was one of the people that told me to get into fashion. He knows that I can do it, just runs in the family. I definitely did make the collection an embodiment of me. I wanted to show strength, vibrancy, and personality, because I feel like I have a vibrant personality. I wanted it to be fun, and I also wanted it to be quirky, because I believe that I'm a little bit of that as well. My collection is very modern, revival, girly and feminine, but deconstructive and pieced together. 
the fashion in Clueless, it was fun. It was vibrant. I liked how they could wear anything they wanted and the confidence would come through. I'm using some of the same elements, some bright colors, but I'm modernizing it. So I'm making it for like girls nowadays. I'm using feathers, fake fur, ruffles, stuff like that. I wanted to take feminine aspects and counteract them with masculine shapes. To design for the lovely girl that packs a mean punch is it's a girl that's girly. She's sweet like me, but she's really feisty. The fashion design program, it taught me a lot. I mean, basically it taught me everything I know about fashion and how to create. They give you direction, but they also give you space to like explore and be yourself. I think it really helped me grow as a person. I just want to get my voice out there and let people know that there are other young, black, talented people making things and they should be supported. <laughs> I, Kashana Brooks, could take over the world. I believe that. My work is inspired by the past, grounded in the present, and looking towards the future. Hi, I'm Madeline Tumalo, and I'm a fashion designer. I decided to come to Jefferson after I was a guest at one of the annual fashion shows and just fell in love with it. I was really impressed. It just looked so professional, like something you see on TV, like it was super cool. And I just was like, okay, I need to be here. I am an art history nerd, super art history nerd. I really like love those old cities. <laughs> I love a good Gothic arch and I love a good rose window. <laughs> Everyone always asks me, what are you inspired by? And I'm like, the world, because that's just what I love. And I'm not just gonna live here for the rest of my life and just stay here. There's so much more to see. Having that global perspective makes art limitless. I can look at the past and be inspired by the past, but I definitely want to make art and clothes that are going to be obviously for the present, but also look to their future, look for better sustainable options, more diversity, just a better life for everyone and include that with fashion. My collection is vibrant, glamorous, historical with a modern twist, exciting. And it's inspired by the Carnival of Venice. That costume design and that um, historical 18th century was what I really loved and was really attracted to. So I knew I had to dive into Venice and that history. Took those colors, took that vibrant world, but made it more modern. Masks were seen as fun and being mysterious. And now, especially with climate change and um, pollution, it's becoming more of a safety issue. And now we actually have to do it to protect ourselves. And I think the beauty of the mask back then can also be beautiful now. Jefferson really helped me learn more about issues that are important to me. I was able to take environmental courses, African-American experience courses, and also have fashion courses. So I was able to learn more about the world. And because of Jefferson, I was able to experience the diversity that our world has. I feel like I've gained myself. I really learned about myself. I definitely have gotten stronger and more outspoken and definitely found who I was, especially um, as a designer. You know, this was one chapter and it's, even though it's coming to a close, it was definitely a life-changing experience. Okay, this is what I want to do and this is who I'm meant to be. And I'm excited to get out in the world. Fashion is a form of art, and any type of art is a method of storytelling. It's all about taking something and just interpreting it in a different way. My name is Brooke Kaplan, and I am a fashion designer. My collection is inspired by the use of Maine folklore in Stephen King's novels. Yeah, when I was first proposing this idea, everyone was a little nervous. They were afraid I was going to make it 
really costumey, way too horror based, but I've been researching this for some time. And the more that I kind of went down this rabbit hole, the more interesting and well-developed my concept was able to get. Research is essential to me. And I find that the more that I look into something, the more interesting details I can pull, the more I can make a concept my own, the more I can just find some really cool elements that I can incorporate in so many different ways. When I got here at Jefferson, I realized that even though I already did have a lot of knowledge about sewing, I knew there was still more I could learn. I was able to fine tune the things that I already knew. I was able to expand on the things that I didn't know. And I think that was really incredible. My collection is edgy, sophisticated, a little bit quirky, pretty playful. It was important to me to take this idea of horror and translate it less as horror, more as just this eerie edginess. It was all about finding this proportion, finding fabrics that conveyed my idea, but not in a cheap, hokey way. So I really leaned into that natural aspect. I leaned into that slight edge with some pleather, with some hardware. My collection includes my collaboration fabric with textile designer Emily Radomski. She's a student here as well. Being able to collaborate was really important to me. It's one of the many reasons that I ended up choosing to come to Jefferson, actually. I liked being able to talk to people that weren't just in the same major as me and to have someone else look at it and be able to interpret it in their mind and bounce off of each other. I think that's really, really valuable. I'm not afraid to take something, flip it around, look at it in a different way and produce something that's unique that no one would ever think of. There are so many things that I'm interested in and there's so many things that I think I could get really, really excited about that I think no matter what I end up doing in the future, as long as it involves fashion and that's what I'm doing, I think I'm going to be so happy. I'm just ready to face the world head on. Fashion design is just what I do. I like to design men's clothes. Trying to mix things that don't really make sense together kind of opens my eyes to more opportunity of creating cooler in the future. My name is Colin Dukes, and I'm a fashion designer. The Jefferson Student Fashion Show really got my attention. When I first saw it, I was like, this is, they take this seriously, but as much as I do. My collection is based around 1800s funerary practices. Most people would say that it was dark. I wouldn't. Death is, is the like transition into whatever is next. It's a focus on life more than anything. When I started just looking more into the, like pictures and, and themes of like what people used to wear during the time and men only had one suit and they used to wear it to every single event. Every single thing was just so important and it made me think like, wow, I gotta do something with this. My collection is masculine, feminine, strong, soft, and confident. The world of fashion needs to hear voices like mine because I'm willing to make a wave and change how people see what fashion can be. The real value of a Jefferson education has to be the skills. The teachers really put me in such a good spot to continue my education even after school. I bring my A game, the assurance of quality on every single thing that I do. I swear to God, like me two years ago, if I saw what I just made, I would be like, what? I made that, you know? My collection is inspired by my love of life itself and how like important every single thing is to me and how like the most minute details can really be the most important. The poncho I thought was just ridiculous. I was like, how can I make something so absurd, even to me? So I was like, let me take myself out of my own comfort zone. The lace was an interesting undertaking. I thought like, wow, how can I mix the most feminine thing into this very masculine collection? I didn't know I was gonna be able to even make some of this stuff. It's like, wow, that's crazy, I did that. I love my collection. I'm sad I'm not wearing it right now. Fashion design can 100% change the world. I feel like any dress or suit or shirt can change somebody's outlook on another person. 
which could allow for different frames of thought based on just an outfit. I'm somebody who really hates being told what to do. So if somebody says, oh, you can't do that. that, that won't work, it won't make sense, I'm like, try me. I'm gonna find a way to figure this out and make it work. My name is Alessandra Filippone, and I'm a fashion designer. You can find creativity in very unexpected places sometimes. I really didn't have a concept at first. I was just like, I really wanna do this for my mom and my parents. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, so my mom, she's like so special to me, like both my parents. When she was young, she wanted to be a fashion designer. I, you know, dedicated the collection to her. It's an ode to her. And I wanted to give her something that she could be so proud of. My collection is bohemian, colorful, fun, elegant, and sophisticated. It's kind of based around Turkey. So I started in Istanbul and Cappadocia, and I kind of just went out from there. And I was, you know, seeing these different shapes that I really loved, little embellished trinkets and Turkish lamps. And I said, this is a really good place to start. I wanted the vision of you like walking through like a Turkish street and seeing all these little embellished trinkets and little tchotchkes and different things on the side of the road. I wanted to bring volume to everything that I've done. I just had this vision of people wearing my garments, like walking down the runway, walking down the street, walking through a field, you know, um, and just watching it move, watching it flow. So I really love the movement. When someone wears my designs, I really want them to feel confident. I want them to feel like they can go out and, you know, be happy, be confident in what they're wearing. Oh, I think I'm gonna miss the people the most, my little like Jefferson family. The entire design department is just incredible. Anne Hand, she's been my mother since I got here. <laughs> my advisor from freshman year till now, she's seen me grow incredibly. Carly Cousy, Kim Rosner, the best professors in the entire world. Such an amazing opportunity to work with all of them. They've always told me, just keep going and you'll get it right. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. That's definitely the best and the most important advice that they've given me. I definitely would not be here today without them. So just a big thank you to them and just love you guys. <laughs> I think I've just learned to work as hard as I can to achieve what I want to achieve. Um, and I think that really does, is going to apply to life as well. You know, if you, if you're constantly like stopping and being so scared to go forward, you're never going to proceed. You're never going to get anything done. So I think what I've learned throughout this collection is just, you know, be as creative as you can and just start doing it. Keep pushing it. You push it to the limit until you're, you've run out of space to, to push it to. I do make beautiful clothes, yes, but they also have a function, a purpose. The aesthetic matters, but it's not the only thing that matters. My name is Mackenzie Miliarini, and I am a fashion designer. My collection is inspired by my family traditions and growing up on the baseball field. There was definitely a challenge of getting it across. People were like, a collection about baseball, what? My brother still thinks I'm designing baseball uniforms, so can't wait to show him that I'm not. Concept development is like one of my favorite parts of the design process. I created these on-the-go mobile boards. Kind of serves as a reminder of my concept, my customer, my fabrication plan, as well as my overall merchandising plan. I piece together different aspects that I love about the game, and I really interact with them in a way that's not literal. My collection is inclusive, nostalgic, hand-spun, soulful, and a narrative. Being at Jefferson, I really found myself as a designer. Who do I want to be? Who do I want to evolve as? And having more of a purpose within my fashion. I'm very passionate about adaptable fashion and designing for the differently abled consumer, while also making it interesting for people of all abilities. I would say I'm most proud of that jacket because it is very beneficial to somebody who is a seated individual. It has the quilting to be more protective and to be more comfortable when you have your arms on the armrest. And it also has a Velcro and elongated placket, which it's easier to get on and off for the wearer. 
I'm really proud of the collaboration that I did with my textile designer, Olivia Manning. I definitely think collaboration is an important part of the process because it's what the fashion industry does. Doing it in college is definitely something that is one of a kind. Uh, at Jefferson, we do have the ability to work with textile designers. So getting to have that hands-on, one-on-one interaction is something that I found really important. It's cool to have magnetic snaps. Why would you not want to have them? I'm going to wear some of these clothes after I'm done with this collection. I want my clothes to be wanted by everyone, but also they're very functional for the day-to-day -day dressing of somebody who is differently abled. Now more than ever, fashion designers have a responsibility. I've seen myself grow in regards to being more outspoken, speaking for those that have been hushed in the industry. How can we make this better? How can we be more innovative? How can we include more people in our campaigns, in the garments that we construct? This needs to change, and I want to help be the change. The value of Jefferson at large is the community. It's an environment where collaboration and close interpersonal connection is like really important. One of the many reasons that I decided to come to Jefferson was because I knew that I was going to be able to interact with a lot of different majors that were so different from my own and learn from them. I can think of no better form of education that would give you a return as quickly or, or give you leadership opportunities as readily as an education from this particular institution. It's active and collaborative and real world and the fact that it's all drawn together with the liberal arts and your understanding, that's not just something we say. You may work with other people, but you'll be known for that certain magic that you have that you worked really hard to develop. What's next for me? I hope to open my own boutique one day. Hopefully in London. <laughs> I want to design lingerie post-graduation. I would love to work at Savage Fenty. I'm ready to start my own streetwear brand for women. My voice will change the world. The dream is booking apartments in Paris. I can do whatever I want. A pandemic happened. Let me go and work for a creative design team in Paris. You would have to go pretty far to find a tougher bunch of designers than our seniors are right now. They've gone through a lot. I mean, when you think about it, it's, it's unprecedented what they've gone through. But they've done it with the same style and grace and the same effort, the same drive that any other group of students have, except perhaps to them it means more because when they get to show it to someone, when they get to bring it close to someone, it's different now because we've been separated for a while. These students really changed my life. I never took a moment to just breathe and be present. And these students every single day have allowed me to be present and to think and really, you know, understand like what's happening in this time. So these students, I will never forget them and they've done so much for me and I'm so grateful for them. I've grown astronomically during my time here at Jefferson. It makes me hopeful about the future, and it's really exciting. Having fashion in my life has made me the creative person that I want to be.